everyone, hope you are well. Today we are going globetrotting to find the dragon, the fox, and the hypothalamus. Stay tuned to find out what I mean by exactly those crazy three words. Now let's go find the bearded dragon. Here's my friend Rexy. She is a central bearded dragon and in the wild they are found in Australia. Rexy is a omnivore, meaning she eats both plants and animals. She loves to eat insects in particular. Now, at the tip of her tongue here, you can see a little white spot. That is very sticky and it helps to grab on to the insects. She is giving us a nice look also at her ear. Reptiles don't have protruding ears like mammals do. And even though there are no external lobes or other appendages, they actually have excellent hearing. Now it's time to talk about the beard. Both male and female bearded dragons have them, and that's because they're used for communication. Here we see a male bearded dragon bobbing his head up and down to communicate dominance, and his beard is actively showing as well. If they feel threatened, say by a bird who are their predators in the wild, they can expand their beard and even their body and tilt it to the side to make themselves appear larger. Bearded dragons are part of the Agamede family, and many species of lizards in this family can actually change color. But why would this be important to the bearded dragon? Well, it actually helps with thermoregulation. Bearded dragons are ectotherms, which means their body temperature is dependent on external sources, such as sunlight. To help warm themselves up, Bearded dragons can flatten their body, usually while basking in the sun to try to get as much vitamin D as possible. They also can change their color. Here's a photo of Rexy this morning. She's a bit darker than normal, and that's because she's trying to soak up as much sun as possible. Now this afternoon, you can see she got a bit brighter and that's because she's absorbed enough sun and is feeling fine. And she can actually run a bit fast. Beardies, once they're warmed up, can run up to speeds of nine miles per hour, which is quite impressive for their size. Now let's meet the fennec fox, which happens to be the smallest fox in the world. They weigh about 1.6 kilograms and their ears alone are four to six inches in length. This means that their ears can be half as long as their entire body. Their ears are huge for two main reasons. Firstly, to help them listen for prey underground, but secondly, to help them dissipate excess heat. This is because they live in some of the most extreme places on Earth, the deserts of Northern Africa and the Sinai Peninsula, where temperatures can skyrocket. Their thick sandy fur, however, helps keep them warm at night because it can get cool on the desert. But during the day, if they choose to go out, it can reflect sunlight as it's light in color. They even have fur on their feet to protect their foot pads from the hot sand. Fennec foxes are endotherms, like we are, which means that they can maintain a constant body temperature independent of the environment. Endothermic animals have to eat much more than ectothermic animals since it takes a lot more energy to maintain a constant body temperature. Endotherms have a variety of adaptations to help them when the weather gets a bit extreme. As we've seen with the fennec fox, they have large ears to help them get rid of excess heat when it's too hot out in the desert. They also behaviorally are nocturnal to avoid the hottest parts of the day. So we've seen some examples of how animals can thermoregulate, but what do we endothermic humans do? Well, first of all, it helps that we have a hypothalamus. That is the operation center, if you will, of sending out the right signals to the right organs to either help warm us up or help cool us off. Now, for example, Say I went for a run today. It's a beautiful 75 degrees Fahrenheit, sun is shining, and I'm running really, really kind of fast. Well, chances are I'd probably start to do this. Cool off. I won't be running with the mister, but instead this water represents sweat. Now sweat, while it can be a bit stinky and a bit gross, it's our body's way to try to cool us off. 
these beads of sweat when they evaporate will help keep our skin cool. Now again, another example, it's cold, it's freezing. You're on the Arctic tundra watching polar bears and it is absolutely well below zero. Chances are, if you're not dressed appropriately with 15 layers or so, you will start to shiver, which means you probably need a cool hat and to scarf up. But if you are still shivering, that's your body's way to try to keep warm. That shaking action will help create heat for your muscles. That is just some of the ways that we, as humans or endotherms, help keep to regulate our body temperatures. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. In the meantime, Rexy and I are gonna catch some rays, so we'll see you later. Bye.